All right, so today we're going to talk about how to create a diverging path motion graphics inside Fusion. This tutorial is basically going to work using free version as well as the studio version. So before I proceed, let me show you what exactly I'm talking about. So we're not going to go deeper on the usage of every nodes here because that's going to eat a lot of time. But I'm going to show you how exactly this thing will work as well as the concept on how you could actually apply it to your uh, motion design here in Fusion. Okay. So let me show you how exactly did this one. Okay. So it's actually set to group already. Uh, but let me just give you an idea. So this one is like being called by using this kind of nodes, which is, I use the mass node, which is the polygon, and then the ellipse node, and then set it to background, and then put some effect on it, and then set the motion, uh, let's say design, or the motion path of it, by calling out the transform node, and then just simply connect, and merge this one over, okay? So, how do I do that? So, let me just give you some examples on it, and hoping that my computer will not crash while I'm doing this tutorial, because it's like, heavy intensive um, let's say uh, software which is at the same time using the OBS software okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the polygon node which is you can press control space or command space in your in your Mac computer if you're using Mac so type poly and you will have like a poly node and then I think it just like came true here and then we're going to move it here so that it will be easy for you to understand. And then we're going to call the background node because polylines need a background. So we're going to need to connect the polyline here. And then we're going to view this background by simply dragging your mouse over here. Or you can press 1 to view that on uh, left viewer. Okay. So we do have that one. And then afterwards, we're going to try to adjust so that we could see exactly what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to create a line here, which is, uh, we're going to start putting up some lines here. So I'm not going to make it perfect because this is just for the set of example. So as you can notice, there's no such thing as line showing up here, but you could go here in Polygon and then try to add an additional values from this one. And then you'll see that there's like something coming up here. Okay, so this is the Polygon. And this is exactly the line. So this is like the uh, path that you're going to use to set your motion design or the motion path for your, let's say, the diverging uh, motion graphics. So the next step that we have to do is go back here in polyline. And then we need to remove the animation of this one first. So you can tap on this one, the red uh, dot that you can see that here. It's, it's telling you that if that is red, it's like telling you that it is like being uh, animated. But if, if that is like not showing up red, then there's no animation in it. So we, we have to remove the animation from this one because we're going to set it up as like a motion path. And then right click on it again. And then we're going to declare this path as a value. So we're going to click publish. Okay. So if you're going to check the modifiers, you can see that there's like a value on it already. Okay. So what we're going to need to do next is this one. So it's circle. So we can do the same thing, the background. And then we're going to call another mass tool, which is similar to Polygon, but we can call the ellipse. Okay. So that's the one ellipse. And then we're going to connect it here to the background. So this is another tool where similar to ellipse that you could actually drag it that come from here, but I much more love calling the node function rather than dragging things here because it's something that I, I would prefer to memorize every now and then. So view the background, which is this one. And then let's just resize this one into this. Okay. And then let's just change color so that uh, we're not going to get confused on the tutorial. So we do have this, uh, this line, and then we do have this. Okay. Which is the uh, head of the diverging path motion. So what we're going to need to do is we need to set the motion path here into a point that this ellipse will going to follow this motion path line. So what we're going to need to do is that we need to animate first um, the motion line that we just created. So how we will do that? Well, it's it's very simple. So go back here in Polygon, 
you have to make sure that before you start animating it you can put it on the first part and then we're gonna go here in length okay so tap on it declare it like you wanted to animate it because it's, it's like showing up right here and then go back here in uh, maybe you can do 24 24 frames per second is equivalent to one second so uh, probably around 36 and then that's the let's say um, path of animation that I like so you can go here and then go back here and then adjust it to zero okay so what would happen there is that if we play that you will see that it got animated so you can see that here right so it's it's actually rendering that's why it's taking some time so what we can do is you can set the render range so that the whole fusion will not get to render the whole composition here because every now and then if you're gonna change something on the node it will render the whole thing so that would gonna slow down your process but instead you can cut up the render process which is uh, maybe around 36 to set the animation so we're gonna put it on 40 so with that so that we can give some maybe allowance on the render so we're gonna start rendering it so let's just wait for it okay so we're done rendering the uh, motion path that we just created okay so what we're gonna need to do is to connect this ellipse into this motion path so we're gonna call the transform node function and then hit enter so we have now the transform node so what we're gonna need to do is we need to connect this motion path at the same time this ellipse path so that it will follow the motion path that we just created so what we need to do is right click here and then click on path so there's like a modifiers so we're gonna show up here and then click on it and then that would give you an option to actually animate this one okay so what we're gonna need to do as you can see it automatically creates this kind of animation or keyframe here so we don't want that so we're gonna remove it and then we set it up that here back from the very beginning so go here and then right click on this one and then connect to and then the name of the polygon that we just created which is the motion path this one okay so we need to connect it to the polygon line 2 and then we're gonna call the function this one the value and then we're, it automatically gonna adds here okay so right now we don't see the circle moving up simply because we just removed the displacement of this value okay so what we're gonna need to do here is that we go back here and the modifiers which is the transform node modifiers and then path and then since we animate the line up to 36 frames we're gonna do the same thing here so that it matches the motion path so what we're gonna do is you want to make sure that your highlight is set to 36 uh, frames and then let's move it around here and then put some animation and then go back here and then put it here okay so you just simply tells to this transform node that hey connect this ellipse node to the motion path that we just created similar to the animation time frame that you just created here so what we're gonna need to do is that if we're gonna display this transform node you will see there that the, the path is animating now right so we just simply needs to merge these two together in order for this one to work okay so what we're gonna need to do is that we actually create need to create a background okay and then this background maybe we can change the color so that you have an idea and then afterwards we're gonna call the merge function this one and then another merge function so that uh, we can connect what we just recently created here okay and then if we're gonna view this node let us see if this is like perfect okay so as you can see the path just simply connects to the motion path that we just created at the same time this ellipse um, let's say a uh, node that we just created okay so that's the concept that we just saw here in this video that I just showed to you which is uh, I just only added some um, additional effect on it so the same process that we just created here in the background I just 
um, added some additional ellipse mask and background to create this kind of light and then as you can see the transform node is like I um, I did try to call the transform node this is to actually animate the background itself so how do I do that so if you're gonna look on it uh, this one let me just show you you see by using this transform node I've adjusted the background here so if you're gonna look on it I'm doing this animation from the background so it's just like the motion path is moving and then afterwards I also animate the background in order for it to make looks like the you know the path is also moving with this kind of motion from the background itself so this there's, there's a tons of way that you can do this one but um you could literally create or comp you know create this composition inside the fusion every now and then and then afterwards so I've got the design I got the animation so I just added some let's say uh, um, effects on it so I put like grain which is uh, basically the purpose of grain is just like uh, putting some noise on it and then the film damage I added this one so that you could actually see this kind of lines and then some damage on the films itself and then um, I've also added like this kind of chromatic aberration on the uh, let's say diverging path that I just created for this one so you can see this one the XF um, chroma fuse this is actually a plugin which is coming from reactor so maybe in a future I can discuss the reactor plugin as well so that you can use that in your motion graphics and then afterwards uh, I just connect it to the media out and then if you're using this DaVinci Resolve you can go back to edit and then you can also do some color you know color grading on this one if you want to but I'm not pretty good at color grading so you can render this whole stuff that you just made and then go here and deliver and then set it up here and then add to render queue and then once that got completed you can actually uh, view the final process which just you know I've just created like this and there you are so that's exactly the concept that I've made here in the Verging Path. So I'm going to create more tutorials for motion graphics using the Fusion because I'm seeing a lot of people who are asking how to do this, how to do that. Just, just like giving you an idea, a good motion design is an extension of a good graphics design. So if you're going to use like, you know, uh, create a good story using the motion design, using Fusion, you have to understand that, you know, a wow or an amazing motion design is coming from a good graphics design so I'm gonna show you how to create that as well using affinity designer because I love it versus the illustrator but maybe somewhat in a future tutorials because there's so much a lot of things to learn here in fusion and I'm gonna try to break it down step by step so I'm gonna post more tutorials and if you do have time go ahead and subscribe to my video